Hello everybody, my name is Nils Körber from the German Federal Institute for Risk Assessment and today I'm introducing the Microscopic Image Analyzer. The Microscopic Image Analyzer MIA was initially developed as our in-house image analysis software and now this is the, we have the first public release so it's free for everybody to use and that's why I'm introducing it here. So the intuition behind this software is to, to provide a tool that gives the user access to state-of-the-art deep learning algorithms and use them on their own data. So it, it provides uh, basically a, a everything included with a graphical user interface uh, for, for everybody to use uh, state-of-the-art algorithm on their, on their own uh, workstation. So the features of the software, as said, is it's an open source software. It's free. You can use it. You you have access to state of the art algorithms. You don't need extra coding. There's a graphical user interface. You can do everything on your on your uh, workstation. Uh, most of the training will run on a, all sorts of NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, you can run it on server. It's um, you can run it on multiple platforms if it's Windows or Linux. There are several tasks that you can perform. It's image classification, object detection, segmentation. Segmentation is what, 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 what I, I will show today. And there's also the option for, for cell tracking. Furthermore, the software includes the labeling of images. It includes the model training with several training options um, which model to train different architectures and several hyperparameters as you can say we you you can use uh, once a trained model you can use it for predictions of, of unseen data and all, for all of these steps you have the the options to to inter interfere with the software or make corrections uh, in the end, you can use the results, export them, use them with another open source software as, as shown here in the meeting, uh, which are presented here, or you can also reuse the models that are trained and uh, use them with the other custom code or so. So the workflow as generally in, in deep learning or machine learning models, basically you, you start with your images, that might come from an image source, might be microscopy or something uh, similar. And you start labeling your images. And with labeling is meant you tell basically the model that is trained in the next step, which objects you would like to detect and to which class they belong. Once you have labeled a bunch of images, you can start training a model and the model is optimized in that way that it will will try to detect uh, objects that are similar to the ones that's seen in the training data. Then you can do your evaluation. You can use the, the model to, to perform predictions of unseen data where you have your scientific questions that, that you would like to solve. And then you have the choice if you say, OK, my model is, f is, is fairly well trained. I can, can use it for, for the stuff I, I need it for. Or you said, I, I would like to furthermore improve the performance. And then you could say, OK, I, I want to correct labels that, that were predicted by my previously trained model. Or I could add more training data. Uh, to to further improve the model and retrain the model and and with this continuous step you will get a uh, continuously improved uh, neural network. So if you were interested in the software, you can uh, visit our GitHub page. There is all the information of how to install the software, which can easily be done via Conda. There's also a manual which you can check for for uh, things that might be un, unclear. Um, there's also where you can find help or post uh, questions. So we're very happy if, if something unclear or you need help with the software, just contact us. And um, we'll try to, to figure out a way that uh, the software works for your problem if it's 
suitable for for the specific problem or not so let's start with this uh, with the software what you see here is the graphical user interface of the mia software right in the middle you you can load images and uh, zoom around on on the left part you have the panels where there are different options um the first thing that you should should need to to decide when starting a project what Si sort of uh, problem do you have is it in image classification so each image gets a specific class could be uh, this image belongs to a cat this is a dog and so on and so forth or you have object detection where you want identify different objects in an image or count them and get their position or and this is what what i'm showing today if you are interested in segmentation and segmentation is that each pixel in an image is assigned to a certain class value the first thing that you need that uh, when starting uh, for training is to to set a training image for her. and then what I'm using here is a public data set which consists of uh, I think two um, time series for training and two for testing so that they are not used for for training and i'm i'm going to use these to to per perform a the to to demonstrate the the software capabilities so this is like an image is looking from from the the first uh, time series of the training set and you see there are stained h2b nuclei from hela cells and the first part would be to identify the nuclei and in the second one we can try to identify cells that are in cell division. So what we first would need is to define like how many classes and as said the first step is to identify the nuclei and we can, can do this as a binary classification problem. So we only need two classes which are like background or uh, cell. And uh, in the sec second step, then we can add a third class to, to differentiate between uh, regular nuclei or the ones which are in cell division. So I, I, I'm just going to show the, the labeling tools here. And you can, for example, use the freehand tool to, to draw a certain shape. We can delete some parts of, of the shape again. And uh, we have always the, the choice to to use a control which has holes in it or without. Sometimes it's easier to to work with controls which which where not no holes are allowed. We also have a polygon tool which we can use to to mark uh, certain structures, or we have an extension tool and we can automatically. Um, extend uh, existing contours or we can remove some parts of, of a contour and th this is all done for for labeling certain objects in the image we can obviously set them for different classes and set the the opacity of these contours to to see uh, where they are and this is like pixel precise so so each pixel in the image will be assigned to a certain value then we can delete those contours again and um, we of course we also can assign a new class or contour which might be useful at some point to to reassign a, a specific class so let's start with labeling only a few images from from the training set and let's see how how we can train a preliminary data a preliminary model and we start can start here with the, we have also an auto segmentation option uh, which we can use as a baseline and then correct those auto segmented uh, objects where you can see here we uh, can then simply add the labels that were not correctly identified by the auto segmentation option and uh, f further extend the labels by doing it by hand 
we have also can uh, set up the the contrast a bit because there are also some very very dim cells here we can add those later and what i'm trying to do now is i i'm going to label just a few set of images and then use them to train a very small model to and try to predict the rest of the training set and i can we can add some of these cells here what is important is if you have an image that everything in the image is labeled we we technically we would have the option to to also exclude some parts of the label if you have a very dense image then you could say like okay i want to only label a specific part inside the image and then uh, then I, I don't have to label the complete image but what is not um what i would not suggest to do is to to leave some of the cells unlabeled then the model would take them as background and they w will will decrease the performance of the model in the end so we're continuing here labeling i do this very quickly here and uh, let's hope this will be enough to to train a a startup model um exactly we can also uh, change and extend our uh, labeled structures all the time some more of these cells here they are very dim and once we have trained a model uh, then we when then we will try to to predict the rest of the training set and use these predicted labels to to and correct their labels if they are like not perfectly predicted and use these extended data set to to get an even better model so we probably can can add uh, one third image here and for this uh, we can use also there's some which is called like smart mode and it will work on on similar structures so what you see here so uh, the, the, it will automatically identify objects which look uh, the same as as we shown here and all of this is done to to reduce the 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 time that needs to be spent for labeling and missing those here and in the end we we simply have to to add the few cells which were not identified by the spark mode but then it was much faster to to label the complete image uh, compared to to like every label every individual cell one by one so i think now there are like three labeled images and um, we can start uh, to try to uh, train a model um, exactly so split this one here and we can set for we go for the the uh, second training time series and and see how how the model performs during learning sometimes this is more intuitive than compared to to using a metric so we have different uh, options for deep learning architecture i i will stick with the default here is the unit which is very popular and there are also several options for for model backbones which you can see here and if you're not familiar with that you can also check the manual there is a reference for for all of these and they are ranging from smaller models to bigger models and usually you trade off the training speed and prediction speed uh, versus performance and if you have only a small data set i would rather um recommend using a smaller model uh, and if you have a 
bigger data set probably go with a digger if you have the computational power. All of these models can be used with uh, pre-trained weights that are trained on a huge data set. The pre-trained weights, if you haven't downloaded them, they are downloaded automatically from GitHub when you start the training. So it might uh, take a few minutes if, if you don't have them. If you don't use the pre-trained ad, you don't have to download anything. So, and uh, we have a monochromatic input here. Obviously the software works also for RGB images, for Z stacks and so on, but these are monochromatic images. And uh, I will, I, I would like to add settings here that we can um, predict on every fifth epoch, predict one of the test images that you see here. We leave everything else we, we can leave on default. I'll probably later go a bit more into details about the deep learning settings, but if you're not familiar with deep learning, that's not a problem. If you're using default values, you, you still might get rather good results if you have good labeled data. So let's see what we can do with this image from, from the second time series of, of the training set from only three training images that we have labeled from the first time series. And uh, as said, like every, on every fifth epoch, we see one prediction of, of, of this image. And uh, what we can see here is that the results actually, they look quite good. I would say surprisingly good actually for only three images, but the point is the task is not too difficult, right? So we only have to, the, to identify uh, fluorescent cells and um, Let's say if we would do this with the classic uh, uh, image processing, we would also it 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 would work at some way to to uh, identify these uh, cells with a with a thresholding technique or so. And uh, yeah, what we see here actually the results look quite okay, I would say. So and with these three results, we could say okay, yeah, it's fine for us. We ha we have uh, we have uh, trained a sec segmentation model which identifies correctly uh, cell nuclei from background but as said we can also uh, predict one, one more in the time series and see okay and then we can still use them um, use the tools to to further improve the prediction if there are errors so i i would not expect that from from three training images that we get a perfect model. And uh, we can make some corrections here. These might be two cells. Uh, but what I said, I would like to also um, identify cells that were in, in the cell division. So they are not, which are not in the interface. And, and let's see. So we could do this by simply adding a third class and probably I start from from the beginning um, and we can add this third class here and then we reassign the labels of some of the cells to this third class which are cells which are in cell division and I'm going through the data set right now and I will fast forward this a bit uh, that you don't <laughs> have to watch me to to label all these dividing cells, but but you can still this in in a, a little bit speed up. And I have to say I'm not an expert in in uh, cell biology, so so I might also miss some of these cells. But I try to to mark all of these cells which are currently in uh, the process of mitosis, and go through the data set. So I think in com in total these are like 92 images for the for each of the time series and the second one is also again 90, 90 plus images and I do the predictions now of the first training time series where we had the three labeled images and then go again through through the time series and trying to, to cor correct all of the um, all of these cells which are currently in cell division. So, and once this is finished, 
then we can train a new model w where where we use the complete training set of these two fully labeled uh, training sets and try to try to get a model which also uh, identifies uh, cells or which separates cells from from which are uh, currently in cell division and uh, not in which are not so i i we, we already have a loaded model here so so these parameters they are like frozen now we could uh, go for reset the model to train the model from scratch but we can start for now with the model we have trained uh, previously uh, for the binary um, binary uh, segmentation problem and extended by the third class which is the cell division cells so some of these parameters are frozen now what i would like to add here is a penalty which is which was shown in the in the unit paper there were cells that are close by and the area between cells that are close by is penalized and this leads to during model training leads to that these cells are separated we can set this parameter here um this will help us because we saw from from the first model that there are some some when, when we have like very close close cells that they are like adding uh, uh, resulting in like one object we can set the uh, pre-processing uh, but uh, we can leave it here because we use a pre-trained model anyway so it will be overridden by the software what um, we, we can leave the predicted image for 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 every fifth epoch as we have seen in the first training so so to monitor our training what might be interesting would be to add a class weighting here because we have a highly imbalanced class we have very few labels which are in cell division compared to the ones in in not dividing cells but the, we leave it for for now as as no class weighting we can leave the loss as cross ent entropy we have uh, options for for different metrics but I, I leave it also on default which is the intersection over union which is the standard pretty much for segmentation problems and also we can leave the optimizer for ad ad adaptive momentum and um, then I'll set like 8% of the training data we can we can set for validation so they are not used during the training but we can use them to to monitor our model performance we could also use a specific folder uh, if we have one certain uh, set of validation data where we want to perform the validation the last is here we we could um, set a learning rate schedule um, but I leave it on that every time the the model performance is on a plateau we we can decrease the learning rate what we can also set here is the augmentation and um, image augmentation is a artificial distortion of images through scaling translation shearing what you see or, or flipping to increase the size of our data set and what are important parameters here I, I leave everything on default but what are also important parameters here are the input width and height and these are the actually the 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 size of images how they are like fed uh, into the neural network so this is this is actually the size of the neural network this is like 224 by 224 pixels and we could increase this and this might also have a uh is um it's it's a parameter which also is limited by the ram basically of the gpu but might also change the performance of the model but the model in the end for the prediction will will have a, will see see the image in patches basically anyway so i speed the training up here a bit so you see the training in in original speed was about like 2 hours on on the workstation i i was working on and uh, that's i think for for the training set of like 180 images 
that's uh, totally fine for two hours the workstation is not super highly equipped i think the price would be now between one and two thousand euros something like that and then you could like do it over your lunch break or even overnight if you have a bigger model and if you would run the same training on on the server or so you 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 could also have the training probably done in 20 or 30 minutes here you see see the first results and i think we have also detected some of the cells which are in cell division for this cell this the model was probably unsure if it's dividing or not and now i'm predicting again all images of the test data and let's see how these results are looking you will see the status bar here below to see uh, that all images are predicted at right now and um, let's check some other images okay we have no cell division here and here are dividing probably the best is i go from from the first image and i go through the time series and i simply scroll through and there here you go we can see quite of these cell division events and i think for the for the short time i think we have trained quite a quite a decent model to identify nuclei which are in cell division versus nuclei which are not in cell division and if you would try to do this with a classical image processing tools you would have to do it, it's a really difficult task for do that but the, with the deep learning approach the neural networks is uh, is able to learn the difference between cells which are in cell division and which are not and i think also there are, the model is probably not perfect but it is like we could further improve the model by by going back through the training set i did this in, in a really quick fashion to to train a model to, to really go into detail or we could use the these uh, predicted uh, images here and correct them and also add them to the training data and then we would have a really really good model i think but so far the model it does not look too bad i would say we i think we identify most of the cell division events that were happening here and uh, what we could do with the with the uh, results we could either use them all export um them as a mask and use them with another software like cell profiler or image j or whatever or we simply save them as a as a comma separated values and use them for our analysis to see for example uh, how uh, cell division events change through uh, with the density of cells and uh, with that i would like to thank you for your attention and uh, you will find me in the Q&A session.